welcome to this tutorial video. My name is Carmen from New Leaf Designs and I'll be showing you how to knit your Cozy Moments shawl. In this tutorial video, we're actually going to be starting our shawl. So in the last video, I showed you guys how to do a swatch. Um, this is with my Wooly Whirl, but I'll actually be knitting my shawl with a whirly gig, which I'm super excited about. So this Hapius whirly gig, um, it's basically a DK version of a woolly whirl. And although the pattern is written for a whirl, so ombre whirls, woolly whirls, original whirls, what have you, um, the pattern is written for a whirl, but you can totally do it in a whirly gig as well. And that's what I'm going to do simply because the yarn is thicker and I'll be able to show you the stitches better. The Cozy Moments shawl is a half circle shawl, also called half pie shawl. And like many half pie shawls out there, it starts with a garter tab. Now a garter tab is a small piece of knitting and uh, it's knitting garter stitch as the name suggests and if I slide it onto the cord of my knitting needle you can see it already has that half circle shape and um, this is going to be the base of our shawl um, this is going to be the middle of the top straight edge and well I should actually show it like this but it's a little bit difficult to hold like this so this is going to be the top edge and here the outside part that's going to spread out and um, that will become the edge of the shawl so the garter tab is what I'll be showing you in this video so what you need is of course your yarn and your needles and in addition to that you'll also need two stitch markers and I'm gonna be using these super cute heart shaped stitch markers for that since I thought it would be appropriate for our Valentine's make along the Val Mal uh, let me just pick two You'll be using these stitch markers throughout your whole shawl. So two of those. And if you don't have any stitch markers, you can also cut off a piece of your yarn, um, tie it so it's in a circle, and then use it as a marker. It just you just need a circle of some kind. So You'll need the markers and you'll also need a row counter. Now I use one of these and you can twist these to uh, choose your row number so the, each of the discs will be numbered 0 through 9. Now you also have row counter rings and you have these um, digital row counters. Uh, I'm just using a simple one and I've put it on a little lobster clasp so I can attach it to my knitting. You can also slide it on to your needle and with circular needles it will stay on the cord. Um, but I just I don't find it particularly handy with circular needles so I made it into this little lobster clasp thing. But it doesn't really matter which row counter you use. Uh, you can also use a piece of paper and, you know, write down the number of rows you have done. Uh, but I really like a row counter. Um, yeah, and then we're all set to start. Now I have my yarn, I have my needles, and I'm going to place my needles in my hand with both tips facing to the left. And I'm going to take them in my right hand like this, and we're going to cast on with Judy's Magic Cast On. Now, 
If you've knit socks before, then you might have used this technique. So we take, um, we leave about, shall we say, 25 centimeters. Uh, that's about 10 inches. And we place it over our needle like this with the end facing towards us. And the working yarn, the yarn going to the ball, will be to the top. So just place it uh, over my top needle and I'm holding it with my right uh, finger. Then I'm placing my thumb and left forefinger in between these yarns and I'm going to twist them so that the end is facing upwards and we create a little loop around our top needle. Now, this is our first stitch, and you'll see that there's no knot using this technique. Then I'm going to keep holding this stitch with my right hand, and with my left hand, I'm going to make swirling motions and put the yarn over the needles like that. So the top yarn, which is this yarn right here, goes in between the needles, and to the outside. This is our second stitch um, or our first stitch on the bottom needle. Now we need to cast on eight stitches which means four stitches on each needle. So I'm gonna take the bottom yarn now, move it in between the needles and to the outside. And we're gonna repeat this until we have four stitches on each needle. So it's a very simple cast on. And um, if everything's correct, your yarn end should now be facing the top. It will, um, you need to pull it a little bit tight because if you let it go, the very last stitch will unwind. Do you see that? So hold it with your right hand and your working yarn is right here. And now we're gonna twist or turn the needles so that the tips, both of the tips, face to the right. I'm gonna keep holding this um, end. Okay, now I'm gonna take out my bottom needle. I'm just gonna slide it out until I have enough, um, to, until I can bend it because we're gonna be knitting with this needle. So keep holding that yarn and you might want to switch up the fingers you're using for this. Okay, now we're gonna be knitting into the stitches on the top needle. Now, as you might be able to tell, these stitches are twisted, uh, which means you would actually want to knit into the right leg instead of the leg that is on the front of the needle. But for the very first stitch, that's uh, that leg is the end that we're still holding. So for the very first stitch, we're going to knit through the left loop. So I'm going to insert my needle from the front to back. I'm going to take my working yarn, put it around the needle as if to knit, pull it through, and take that stitch off the needle. Now you can let go of this end. Um, you might have to tighten up that stitch later. So now the next stitch, you'll see that this one is twisted as well. And for this one, we can just knit it through the right loop. Um, so by doing that, we undo the twisting. So I'm gonna knit through the right loop. Like that. I'm gonna do the same for the other two stitches on here.
All right. Now we have knit one, the first row into our pattern. So we've done the cast on and we've knit one row of knit stitches. And uh, after the cast on, we should knit 10 rows of garter stitch. So that's 10 rows of knit stitch on each side. And we're going to be using our handy little row counter to keep track. So I'm just going to set it to one. I'm going to place it here right now. It's, it's not like my shawl is uh, big enough to attach it to yet. So I'm just going to place it here. Um, right now we're going to turn our work. So we're going to flip it. So you're looking at the pearl side of the stitches we just did. Now I'm going to take our yarn to the back side. I knit continental style, but you can also knit throwing style. That is no problem at all. So we're going to knit this row as well. This will be our second row of knitting. And as our stitches are nice and secure now, we don't really need to pay attention that we need to hold any ends and we can just knit them as we usually would. So I'm going to take my row counter, set it on two and move it aside again. Then I'm going to flip my work again. And now I'm going to work the third row. And you're going to keep doing this. So that was the third row. You kind of keep doing this until you have knit 10 rows. Oh, right. I wanted to show you in case this happens. So when you've um, turned your work during doing garter stitch, um, the stitches on the row just below will always be pearls. But um, if you hold your yarn like I do, uh, the first stitch might be lifted a little bit so it looks different. In this case, please do not start knitting into one of these loops, but recognize that this should be pearl stitch. And what you want to do is take the yarn to the back of your work and make it look like a pearl stitch again. See? You want to keep having four stitches and not suddenly have five. See? So that's just a little handy tip. Uh, so you're going to keep doing this until you've knit 10 rows. And come meet me back for the next part of our garter tab. Now after you've knit those 10 rows, your work should look like this. A little tiny strip rectangular piece of garter stitch knitting and to complete our garter tab we are going to pick up stitches along this edge so you're finished with uh, row 10 you don't turn your work and you continue knitting on this edge so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slide my stitch and uh, my needle in there so that I so that I have both needle tips right here. And now you can see that we have one, two, three, four, five ridges of pearl bumps. And those are really handy for picking up stitches. Now we need to pick up six stitches and we only have five pearl bumps. That is very intentional. You could knit an additional two rows so you have six pearl ridges, but I've intentionally only done five to make it a little bit more tight because with half circle shawls, there's a problem that if you have too many stitches on the starting point, the shawl will have a little a little bulge. It will, it will not be completely flat. So with this, um, I tend to uh, prevent that. So we'll be picking up stitches and I am inserting my left needle tip into the pearl bump here. Let me zoom in a little bit more. 
So I'm going to take this pearl bump with my needle. Don't be afraid to stretch it a little bit so you can actually see that. See? And with this needle, I'm going to insert simply through the front and I'm going to knit that stitch. I'm going to do the same with the second pearl bump. Give it a little pull there. And I'm going to knit into that stitch. So now I've picked up two. And, and now with the middle pearl ridge, we're going to pick up two stitches. So I'm going to pick up one stitch from this pearl bump and one stitch from this pearl bump. So this one first. I'm going to knit into the this stitch. And now I'm going to pick up this one. If you can't recognize which one it is, it doesn't really matter. Just pick up a loop and make sure it doesn't leave a huge gap. So we're going to pick this pearl bump and knit into that. So that was our fourth stitch and now it's easy breezy since we have two pearl ridges left. There's our fifth stitch and then oh, actually for this one I'm going to use my uh, right hand needle to pull up the stitch because I don't want these stitches to drop off. So I'm going to pick that up. I'm going to put it on the left hand needle and I'm going to knit into that. There. And now I'm going to knit these four stitches to complete the row. And there we have it. And this is our little garter tab. You spread it out on your cord. You can see the half moon shape. And these little garter ridges that are going to continue on both edges of the shawl. So this will be a really nice continuation of that. Okay, so now I'm just going to show you how to place the markers on your next row. So we're going to turn the work. And since uh, the yarn end is still very close to the working yarn at this point, be sure to not knit with that or you you run out of yarn very quickly. So this is row one of the actual pattern. So we're going to, going to knit four. And then PM, which means place marker. So I'm placing one of my stitch markers here. Then since it's the wrong side of our project, we're going to purl six stitches. And now I'm going to place the second stitch marker and then we will knit the four remaining stitches. Oops, what did I do there? I split the yarn. Or, no, I didn't knit it at all. <laughs> okay. Knit that one. Okay. Knit the last one. There we go. All right. So that was the wrong side. I am going to attach my row counter to this side, which is the right side. And you'll know it's the right side because you can see the knit 
stitches here as opposed to the purl side on the wrong side. So I'm just going to attach it here. I'm going to set it to one because we just did the first row of our pattern. Doesn't really matter where you attach it as long as it's on the right side. Okay, and that was part one of our pattern. So we just knit our little baby garter tab. Now this was the very first part of your shawl. I'm going to do another video on the increase section that's right after this. Um, and then a video per lace pattern. So if you're ever unsure what the pattern means, then just come and find my tutorial videos and I'll guide you through it. So I hope to see you in my next video and I hope you have loads of fun knitting this shawl during our Valentine's Mal, the make-along. If you're sharing any pictures of your work, be sure to share it with the hashtag ValMal and Cozy Moments Shawl. And you can share your pictures in the Scapies Facebook groups or on Instagram. If you're sharing your pictures on Instagram, be sure to tag me as well as I'd love to see all of your shawls. I'm at newleafdesigns.nl and you can also tag Scapies and I'll put Scapies down below as well because I know it's not a straightforward name for non-Dutchies. Um, so we'd love to see all of your shawls. I'd love to see which colors you've chosen. And I'll be right there in the Skippies Facebook groups if you have any questions. So yeah, I just, I hope you have loads of fun and let's knit this shawl together. See you in the next video, bye.